Hey everybody, how's it going? So a bunch of you guys have been asking me about the Audio Assault plugins and I've got just that right here today. We're checking out the new Sigma. Now, what's interesting about Audio Assault is that the plugin is on sale right now for a whopping $14.99. Big question on everyone's mind is, can something that cheap actually sound good? Well, this should tell you right off the bat. Okay, so Audio Assault hit me up there about a week ago and asked for a couple of videos and I was like, yeah, sure, why not? I'd love to check your stuff out. I got a chance to check out some of their plugins earlier this year. I'll link to that in the description below. They've got a whole bunch of super useful stuff for dirt fucking cheap, which is what I absolutely love. These guys are what you would call a serious bang for the buck kind of company. So they just released a couple of new amp sims, one being the Sigma, the other being the RVXX, which I'm going to be checking out next. But for right now, yeah, we're, we're checking out the Sigma. And so far, I gotta say, I am absolutely in love with this little thing. This thing is killer. First and foremost, what I like more than anything is the ability to redraw the interface and resize it however you like. I'm gonna be 50 later this year and you know, glasses are great, but being able to resize the interface really does help. And if a lot of you young guys are wondering what I'm talking about, just wait a while, you'll see what I mean. Anyway, the interface is pretty straightforward. Gain, focus, bass, mid, treble, presence, depth, and master. There's also a gate, in and out level controls, and checkboxes for stomp, amp, and cabinet. And it comes loaded up with a set of impulse responses right in the program itself. Plus you can load and save various impulse responses in 10 slots. I've already got a couple of my favorites in here. The only gripe I've got so far is that I've written over a couple of my favorite impulses because of the slot system. I wish there was like a verification, you wanna save this, yes or no, or overwrite, yes or no, that would definitely save me a little bit of grief. But as far as gripes go, that one's pretty minor. All you gotta be is not dumb. We also have a little gear here, which sets up your routing for stereo, mono, uh, and oversampling rates. So let's set this up for eight, over, eight times oversampling, see what we get. Yep, it's not on right now. So yeah, we can basically turn on the amp and that's not gonna give us anything with an impulse response. And yeah, you can hear the gate kick in and out. Now, if I pull that gate in a little bit harder, that really does the job. Pull it out, it's pretty hissy. Of course, the impulse response is what makes the sound in any amp sim. And that's pretty good, but I think the thing really tightens up once we kick on the stomp. That's pretty freaking cool. Of course, that is my own custom uh, vintage 30 Fredman configuration on my rev cabinet. If we go with one of the supplied impulses, we are definitely going to get a pretty serious tone shift. Let's take a look through here and see what we get. We'll see what, uh, see what else is up for grabs. Unfortunately, there's no scroll wheel function or arrow key or whatnot to scan through the impulses. It looks like they have to be loaded individually. Uh, just as a point of convenience, I think that's something the interface could be updated to. Because it's kind of difficult to go back and forth. That's actually pretty cool there. Oh yeah, the C414. If any of you guys watch uh, Mix Bus TV with my friend David Nazi, uh, the C414 is one of his secret weapons for recording metal guitar, and there's a reason for that. They're really cool. <laughs> That's pretty neat too, 441 and a 57. It's a little buzzy, not too bad. Pretty cool, I gotta say. Now I'm just gonna go back to one of my favorite IRs, my Rev V30 Fredman. 
Let's just uh, check out the presence and the trouble, show you how that's affecting the tone. <laughs> Just a little bit of the fizzies there, not too bad. That brightens things up a bit. Mid-range. I like that. Might be a little much, we can take that back in touch. Definitely thickens things up. How about the depth? And the focus, this is the danger knob in my opinion. This is, uh, can definitely add a real edge to things and you want to be careful how much you're dialing in there. Kind of reminds me of like a shape knob on say a valve state or an older solid state crate amp, something like that. It's like, they're fun, but be real careful how much you apply because you could really screw up your sound very, very quickly. Things got tons of gain though. Stomp control here. I'm imagining that is basically your overdrive clean boost going into the preamp section here. Uh, there's no way to access what it's actually doing. You gotta kinda take it for their word that they've got dialed in on something that's going to benefit you. The trade-off being you could always add a freeware tube screamer simulation and put it in the chain before the amp and dial it in exactly how you want. However, the convenience factor of just having a checkbox, in my opinion, is absolutely great. It saves the dicking around factor quite a bit and lets you get back to playing your guitar. Now, I don't know if this is the first amp sim I'd reach for when it comes to clean tones. It'll do the job. but it's not really got that smoothness I'm looking for. It's definitely got a lot of grit built right in. Which is cool. If you want like a dirtier, more rock and roll kind of sound. That's actually kind of cool. Let's pull the uh, presence back here, see what we get. Bring up some depth, maybe a little bit more gain. We're gonna keep that stomp off though. Take the output back to normal. Dynamically, it definitely reacts like a real amp should. That's actually pretty cool. I mean, like a lot of amp sims will kind of crumble when it comes to dynamic playing like that. This actually responds very nicely. Of course, this thing absolutely rips when it comes to screaming lead tones as well. Like check this out. <laughs> This amp sim's a lot of fun to play like that with a little bit of delay and chorus thrown on for some noodling. But of course, the real challenge is how well does it hold up in a mix? Joining me on this one is Jackson Ward on drums and all the way from across the pond, Mr. Eric Arco on guitar and bass. Check this out.
At $14.99, I think the Sigma is criminally underpriced. Even at its regular price of 30 bucks, I think it's criminally underpriced. This could easily rival other amp sims out there that cost four to five times as much. It really is that good. The only real downside I can see is that it's a single channel amp and it really doesn't do clean sounds all that well. But if you're into recording desktop metal, $14.99 really isn't that much to ask. But don't take my word for it. Follow the link in the description below and check it out for yourself. Thanks very much for watching. Thanks for hitting that fucking subscribe button. And thank you so much to Jackson Ward and Eric Arco for putting an amazing performance together. Until next time, stay home, stay safe, wash your hands, and we'll all get through this. Take it easy.